clomp, clomp. Every time I walk, there's always a loud sound. Since I was young, I've suffered from a condition where one leg is longer than the other, known as hemihypertrophy. Because the leg length discrepancy had to be corrected, I always had to wear a bulky orthotic device. I was always the last to move between classes at school, and instead of walking with friends, my mom always had to drive me to and from school. Even though everyone else seemed to be having a lot of fun, I couldn't join in. The number of times I've clenched my teeth in frustration was too many to count. Fortunately, the treatment went well, and I was able to get rid of the device in middle school, but the bullying I faced in elementary school left me introverted. Until I became an adult, I lacked confidence in myself and was terrible at talking to people. But a turning point for me came. I was the sort of person who was always nervous and was bad at speaking, so it was unexpected that I was assigned to the sales department. With the help of my senior colleagues, I gradually started to enjoy conversing with people and began to gain confidence in myself. Then, one day, I received an invitation to an elementary school reunion. Feeling more positive, I decided to take the plunge and attend the reunion. I sent an email to the organizer and let him know that I was coming. My name is Michael. I'm 27 years old, working for an ID company. I moved from my hometown to New York and haven't been back home for a while. I was really looking forward to this reunion in my hometown, and uncharacteristically, I even bought new clothes for it. I knew it was just silly pride, but I wanted to show everyone how much I'd changed. This feeling most likely stemmed from my old inferiority complex, and I was well aware of that. But the fact that I wanted to surprise everyone was an enormous step for me, and a sign of my growing self-confidence. On the day of the reunion, Full of determination, I headed back to my hometown. The hometown I hadn't seen for a while was bustling with life, especially at night. Was it always this lively? I was slightly surprised to see the town had changed. I walked towards the reunion venue, occasionally checking my phone for the exact location of it. Entering the pub, which was the venue, I noticed it was already full of my old classmates. Although they were all my classmates, I only knew them from school. It had been over 10 years since I last saw them. Few faces looked familiar, but even my own memories were vague. Is that him? Could she be? As I made my way through, someone suddenly tapped me on the shoulder from behind. Michael Wright, long time no see. I heard you moved to New York. How have you been? As if that was a signal. Everyone turned around, and I was quickly surrounded. There were those who were unrecognizable with the glasses on, those who had grown taller or put on weight, and even some who were already concerned about thinning hair. Every face was filled with nostalgia and warmth. No one mocked me. In fact, most people I spoke to had something kind to say, and even if it was just flattery, I felt elated. They said that I became cheerful, that I looked totally different. Some even called me handsome and said I looked cool. I was flattered by all the compliments, except for the last one, which to me sounded like an old insult. For someone who used to be called nerdy and introverted, I was doing well and now part of everyone's circle. I believe it was because of the experiences and confidence I gained in the workplace. Trying to maintain my composure, I was actually overwhelmed with happiness. Of course, it wasn't just the guys. A big part of why I felt so good was because even the girls started to see me in a new light. Back in elementary school, I was quiet, keeping a low profile in class, so being surrounded by so many girls made me feel like I was in a dream. I wish I could show this to my younger self, that was what I thought to myself several times since arriving at the venue. Holding a pint of beer in my hand, I was happy to reconnect with familiar faces. But honestly, there was one girl I especially wanted to see at this reunion. Her name was Ashley, a girl who was the belle of our class. 
With her white eyes and silky hair, she was a very pretty girl and looked like someone you'd see on TV. Moreover, she was calm and kind, and treated everyone the same way. During my school years, she was always on my mind. She was the only person who cared about me and came to talk to me as I had no friends. Her kindness kept me from becoming chronically absent from school, and gradually, the bullying towards me lessened because of her. To me, she was nothing short of a lifesaver. I wanted to see Ashley again, so I could express my gratitude for her kindness. I casually looked around, desperately searching for her. Amongst the high-pitched voices of women exclaiming, long time no see, and what have you been up to? I heard someone call out, Ashley. I turned around in a hurry, and there, among a group of girls, stood a woman in a navy dress with her elegant back facing me. Judging by the familiar silhouette, I thought it must be Ashley. Even from behind, her aura was distinctly different from the others. I caught my breath, hesitating to approach and speak to her. Then suddenly, she flipped her hair and turned around. It was Ashley, no doubt about it. She had maintained her youthful features and, if anything, had grown into an even more refined and beautiful woman. Michael, Ashley, long time no see. I walked up to her and I stood face to face with Ashley. But standing in front of her, I felt a sense of discomfort. Although hidden by her hair, I could see scars from burns stretching from her face down her neck. They extended to her hand holding a glass of wine, significantly marring her once perfect appearance. She must have been in some kind of accident since we last saw each other. Trying not to stare at her scars and hoping Ashley didn't notice. I forced a wide smile and Ashley responded gently, it's been a while, have you been well? I could tell she knew what others thought of her physical condition. Yet, her attitude of enduring and accepting the curious stares was admirable, and she was the same Ashley I had fallen for back then. I can't believe she came to the reunion looking like that. She looks like a monster, so creepy. I couldn't bear it if I were her. Cruel whispers reached my ears from behind. Turning around, I saw a few girls speaking ill of Ashley in barely audible voices. Ashley, hearing them, remained composed and calm. She was probably used to such situations. I couldn't believe how cruel those girls were. They used to be her close friends back in the days. Were they feeling satisfied by Ashley's altered appearance? A pang of pain and rising anger welled up in me. How can you say such awful things? Ashley hasn't done anything wrong, has she? Don't pick on my fiancé, please. My protective instinct led me to say something outrageous. My fiancé, wasn't there a better way to say it? Regretful, but it was too late. There was no turning back now. What? We weren't even talking to you. Why don't you leave us alone? The girls retorted dismissively and then drifted away like the receding tide. Ashley, relieved to see them go, yet seemingly apologetic for causing me trouble, looked at me with an indescribable expression. She looked sad, frustrated, and embarrassed. Seeing her like this made me feel uneasy. Let's step outside for some fresh air. Ashley looked up and whispered in a voice so soft that no one else could hear. I thought it was a good idea. I nodded silently and we both slipped away from the reunion. Once outside the pub, under the cold winter sky, the full moon seemed higher and more beautiful than usual. We found a park nearby and sat down on a bench together. Every now and then, a cold breeze blew, and I hurried to find a vending machine to buy two warm drinks. Ashley had been silent since we left the pub. Trying to change her mood, I brightly offered her a drink. Here, would you like some warm coffee or cocoa? She thanked me and chose a can of coffee, holding it in her hands to warm them without opening it. Sorry about earlier, I went too far, I just wanted to shut them up, so I impulsively called you, my fiancé. I didn't even understand why I called her like that. 
Being in an unfamiliar situation might have made me feel more tipsy than I thought. As I was puzzled, Ashley finally looked up. Michael, you really surprised me. We haven't seen each other in over 10 years and suddenly we're engaged, but I was happy you defended me against the backstabbing. Thank you, really. Ashley said, smiling brightly. I was expecting to be scolded, but instead, she thanked me and smiled happily. I was even more confused, but her kindness was just like it was back in elementary school. Always cheerful, considerate, and not taking things negatively. Her unchanged strong spirit reassured me, and I wanted to know what happened to her. Sensing my thoughts, Ashley began to speak hesitantly. Michael, I need to tell you about my scars. A few years ago, the cafeteria where I worked caught fire, and I got these injuries then. She brushed her hair aside, showing me the scars. She explained that there were more scars hidden under her clothes. Even in the dim moonlight, I could see them clearly, and I almost wanted to look away. In that fire, a senior co-worker who tried to protect me died. As the building collapsed, she shielded me with her body and got me out. Ashley tearfully spoke about that time. She said she'd still dream about the fire, waking up from nightmares and not being able to sleep afterward. Every time I see my scars, I remember the fire vividly. I used to be afraid of people seeing them, but now I'm just grateful to be alive. I have to live strongly for the person who protected me from the fire. It's only recently that I've started to think positively about what happened. I didn't know what to say. Despite the misfortune, she was living with such determination. When I was teased and mocked for my disability, I was always thinking negatively about myself. But Ashley was moving forward, trying her best to face reality. Ashley, you are an amazing person, just like you were back then. I spontaneously expressed my feelings. In elementary school, your willingness to treat me normally encouraged me. I thought I could repay you today, but I guess I still have a long way to go. As I said this, Ashley suddenly burst into tears. What have I done? I hurriedly offered her a handkerchief. I'm sorry for crying all of a sudden. Even though I try to think positively, sometimes I wish I could go back to my old self. So when you said I hadn't changed, it made me so happy. Thank you. Ashley said, smiling through her tears. Her face, now calm, was as bright and cheerful as I remembered from the past. I felt relieved and reflected on my own past. Me, wearing an orthotic device, limping as I walked. Ashley would carry my textbooks and bring me school lunch. During lunch breaks, as I couldn't play outside running around with others, she would stay with me indoors, sometimes just the two of us, playing games. It will surely get better. Ashley was the only one who ever said such things about my leg. Even when I was cynical and sullen, she encouraged me, telling me about the places we could go to once my leg treatment was over. Ashley was always there for me, offering encouragement and support. She was the reason what I've been able to avoid pessimism and make it this far in life. Now, it was my turn. I wanted to be the one to support Ashley, like she did to me years ago. I made up my mind. Hey, Ashley, if you're okay, would you like to go out for a meal sometime? I'd really like to see you again. To be honest, I'd never asked a woman out before. But, I had nothing to lose. I thought I should just express all my feelings towards her. Are you sure you're okay to go out with someone with big scars? Wouldn't you rather ask out someone pretty? Her response could be taken as a no. But for me, it was more than enough. I responded, it's fine, I'm free all the time anyway, revealing my lack of dating experience, and Ashley chuckled. Seeing Ashley laugh out loud for the first time in a while filled me with joy. After that, we started seeing each other more often. Surprisingly, Ashley had also moved to New York and was working while saving up for skin regeneration treatment. Our dates were simple, 
often just eating the lunch Ashley made in the park. We couldn't afford to go to expensive places, but seeing Ashley's modest and diligent side just made me happy. We were drawn to each other and naturally started dating. The incident at the reunion and also the fact that we came from the same town played a big part, but we never explicitly said let's be together or directly expressed our feelings. It just became natural for us to spend time together. The reason why I became aware of how our relationship was progressing was that I started to seriously think about marriage. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Ashley. No matter what, I wanted to be there for her, who always brightened my life with her cheerfulness. Also, from a financial perspective, it made more sense to live together rather than separately. That was how I came to think about our future. And then it suddenly hit me. I hadn't even told her about my feelings for her. I was pretty sure we were in a relationship, but... But I'd never directly said I love you, and I also wondered how Ashley felt about me. This sudden insecurity overwhelmed me. Given that this was my first ever relationship, I didn't really know how to deal with my feelings. But I needed to find out if Ashley and I were on the same page. One weekend, as usual, I was waiting for Ashley in the park when she appeared, slightly flustered, as if she thought she was late. Sorry I was late, Ashley apologized, and I told her that she wasn't late at all, and that I arrived early. Hey, how about we go somewhere else for a change? Maybe to a department store or something. What? But I made lunch for us. Ashley replied, surprised by my suggestion, opening her bag to show me the sandwiches in a plastic container and soft drinks. As I suggested we eat the lunch on the rooftop of the department store, Ashley sensed the unusual atmosphere and became tense, asking, What's going on? Why the sudden change? I scratched my head, took a deep breath, and confessed. I want to get you a ring. It would look cool if I knelt down and pulled out a ring, but I have never been to a jewelry shop and don't even know what size of ring I have to get for you. I apologize everything seems to be out of order, but I want to marry you, Ashley. Right now, I want to go to the department store to buy a ring for a proposal. When I finished with what I wanted to say, Ashley froze, her mouth agape, then suddenly started laughing. I knew it was awkward and deserved the laughter. But seeing Ashley laugh through her tears, I gradually became annoyed. I was about to say, stop laughing, when I realized Ashley was actually crying. Crying while laughing, she said, too late. For a moment, I didn't understand what she meant. You already said I was your fiancé. As soon as I heard those words, I instantly calmed down and apologized, sorry to keep you waiting. After that, we officially became husband and wife and started living together. With our finances more stable, I was able to get Ashley several surgeries. Thanks to her enduring the tough treatments, the scars from her burns have become much less noticeable. Now I can finally wear a wedding dress, she said with a smile. Every time I see Ashley's happy smile, I feel truly fortunate to have met her. Poor people should just wear work clothes to parties. Don't bother with a suit. Just come in your construction outfit. I was overwhelmed by such arrogant words. Just because I work in construction, I was looked down upon. Forget it. I shouldn't have even bothered talking to you. I didn't want to ruin the atmosphere at our reunion. Unable to ignore what was said, my best friend suddenly interrupted the conversation. My name is Brandon. I'm an only child with no siblings. Ever since I was young, I've never been one to seek the spotlight. Rather, I've always wanted to support others. My father, Michael, runs a small-scale construction company, though modest in size. He provided enough so that my mother and I never lacked anything, allowing me to attend college. Construction involves a diverse range of projects closely linked to everyday life, such as railways, ports, airports, roads, tunnels, bridges, 
dance, and river management. This profession often deals with transportation infrastructure. My father continued this work from my grandfather's time, specializing in bridges and river management. Brandon, that bridge over there, I built it, he would say, taking me to see the bridges over rivers since I was a child. There are all kinds of bridges. They connect people. Building bridges that make life more convenient and bring smiles to people's faces. That's my purpose in life. As I grew older, I began to understand and admire my father's words and his work. Railways, roads, tunnels, none of these can be improved without someone proposing and building them, relieving inconvenience. I wanted to understand people's inconveniences and address them, bringing smiles to their faces. My father's approach to his work was profoundly simple. In college, I studied business and did fairly well. When it came time for job hunting, I told my parents this. I'm thinking of helping dad after I graduate. I want to work at Thompson Construction. My parents were shocked and exchanged glances. Why give up job hunting? Why not try something new? My mother said. Our company is in a tough spot, getting fewer jobs in these times. It's been better than expected until now, but the future of a small family business is uncertain, my father added. I expressed my feelings. I know it's tough. My personality doesn't fit following the same path as everyone else. I feel compelled to help out. In gratitude for all the support I've received, watching dad work has naturally led me to this decision. Remember, these are tough times. Yeah, Thompson Construction, inherited from my late grandfather, is my legacy. As the only son, I feel responsible for its future good or bad. My parents were moved to tears. After graduating, I joined the family business, Thompson Construction, to assist with construction work. While my friends were busy job hunting, I spent my time in the university library, studying for construction-related qualifications. My university friends had their opinions. Brandon's helping with his family's construction work. If he had properly job hunted, he could have gotten a decent job. Graduating from college to become a construction worker, he took the easy way out by taking over the family business. The easy way out, uh, well, there's some truth to that. While everyone else was working hard at job hunting, I was the only one cooped up in the university library. What others said didn't matter, I had decided my future. For better or worse, it was up to me. Honestly, I didn't care about the rumors of who landed jobs at major corporations or fast-growing companies. Studying before joining the family business was my form of job hunting. After college, I joined the 20-employee Thompson Construction and learned the ropes mainly from my father. On the construction site, in the office, and even at home, there was so much to learn that the only time I could really relax was during lunch breaks. I constantly thought about how to compete with larger and smaller companies, improving monthly sales. But as my father warned, it's a tough world for small family businesses. It's a world of survival of the fittest. I spent a lot of time analyzing when things weren't going as planned. At one point, I asked my father about my doubts. Dad, our company excels in bridge and river management, but what if we expanded our scope and transportation infrastructure? If we spread ourselves too thin, we'll struggle with manpower. It's the people who make things happen. Expanding too much can incur unnecessary costs, not to mention the technical aspects. I see, it's complicated, isn't it? To expand our operations, We'd have to open offices beyond our county. We've been a community-focused business, trusted by the locals because of our personal touch. Right, that's the core of our business. Determined to promote what our company excels at, I hired a design firm to create a website and also started using social media to spread information, becoming a bridge that connects people. After a day's work, I'd return home and study for construction-related qualifications. 
Earning these qualifications would broaden my ability to build bridges that connect people. That's it. I'll become the bridge. I believed and put in more effort than ever before. Time flew since I started working with my father. Six years passed in the blink of an eye. One day, I received a letter at home. It was from my high school best friend, David. I wondered what it was about. The alumni reunion of Cedar Grove High School will be held on the 3rd of May. Please join us. So, it's been 10 years since we graduated from high school. I wonder how everyone from the basketball team is doing. Throughout middle and high school, I was part of the basketball team. I worked hard as a regular player and as the vice captain. David was the captain back then. An invitation to a reunion from such a relationship. David organizing it, that's exciting. Oh, I wonder if the team assistant will be there too. I don't really want to see her, but I'll avoid conversation if she is. The awaited May 3rd arrived. The reunion was a standing party, renting out an entire floor of a hotel. There were 360 alumni and our respected teachers in attendance. Even the principal graced us with their presence. Seeing everyone in suits, dresses, and flawless makeup, I realized how much people can change. Everyone looked so mature. I should have bought a new suit for this day. I'm always in work clothes, rarely in a suit for business. Even though I tried picking out the best suit I had, it was clear that I was the only one looking outdated and unfashionable. Hey, Brandon, how have you been? David, long time no see. Why are you dressed like a hotel manager? Heh, I'm the manager of this hotel. Normally, you couldn't rent this room for a party. You're managing the place. That's amazing. This is the Phoenix Room, right? It's as splendid as its name. The participation fee was low, right? I managed that. Thanks for that. David, the popular captain of our high school basketball team, had become the manager of a hotel. Surrounded by women, he was as popular as ever, playing the part well. Everyone, enjoy the special buffet course we've prepared. The women were excitedly chattering. David always knew how to please and had a knack for understanding women. That's something I couldn't do, I'm envious. Hey, Brandon, the female team assistant is here. Really, I didn't really want to see her. What, getting shy? Oh, there's our team assistant. Hey, Emily, Brandon's over here. Keep him company. David, wait a second. I found myself face to face with Emily, the team assistant of our high school basketball team, whom I wasn't too keen on meeting. Since my sophomore year in high school, Emily and I were dating. We attended the same university and even the same department. Our relationship lasted for six years until we graduated from college. Emily's mother was the CEO of a well-known domestic apparel company. She was the only daughter of this successful CEO, essentially a business heiress. Brandon, you're really dressed up today, standing out all by yourself, but in a bad way. Her sarcasm had begun. Starting with a jab at clothing, typical of an apparel CEO's daughter. Her scrutiny is always more intense than most. You're helping out with your dad's business now, right? Yeah, that's right. How are you doing, Emily? You should be more worried about yourself. Emily wasn't so haughty back in high school. She used to be kind and considerate. I fell for her personality and asked her out, but our relationship quickly cooled off during our junior year of college when job hunting began. The chill set in when I told her I was going to help with the family's construction business. Brandon, are you okay with this? I made my choice, so yes. You're going to help with a small, family-run business that might not even survive. Do you realize you'll end up as a construction worker? What's wrong with that? Emily, you're going to help with your family business too, right? The only difference is the scale. I'm thinking about the future. 
After that, Emily often looked down on me. It became tough to continue the relationship and considering our futures. I ended things near the end of our senior year. Over six years had passed since then, and now here we were, meeting again at the reunion, having had no contact in the meantime. Even by your clothes, it's clear you've had it tough. Really, I thought I managed pretty well with what I had at home. Brandon, you're always so plain. Your everyday life, your clothes, your job. Maybe so. I guess plain suits me. Emily, on the other hand, is quite flashy. Typical of a CEO's daughter. She was the most dazzlingly dressed among the women here today. There was no comeback for her comments on clothing. Being usually in work clothes, are you indifferent to parties like this? I'll try to be more mindful next time. Because of such a job, even your heart is becoming impoverished. I don't think my heart is impoverished, though. Sensing my current situation, Emily continued with an even sharper tone. Poor people should just wear work clothes to parties. Don't bother with a suit. Just come in your construction outfit. What an attitude. What have I done to deserve this? Being looked down upon just for being a construction worker, and even my company's uniform, which I wear proudly, is ridiculed. To me, my work clothes are like a uniform with a number on the back. Forget it. I shouldn't have even bothered talking to you. Emily had become an even more disappointing person than when we broke up in college. I was hoping she'd become a more mature woman, but this was just too disappointing, almost to the point of tears. Emily, do you even know what Brandon is doing now? Unable to ignore her comments, David suddenly interjected. David, you don't have to say anything. No, I have to say this as a friend. What, David? You're defending this poor guy. You have the nerve to call him poor. Sure, his clothes might be a bit outdated. But listen, Emily. Brandon has been thinking about turning his father's business around, revamping internal operations, starting with their own website and social media to let people know about their specialty. He's also earned multiple tough qualifications and is now even consulting for other construction companies. He's highly sought after in the industry. Really? Is that true? Emily's eyes widened in surprise. When I first joined Thompson Construction, we specialized in bridges and river management, but now we've expanded our scope to include railways, ports, and roads as well. I acquired all the qualifications I could in civil engineering, and the bridges I aimed to build connected people in various ways, even leading to consultancy work. That's what my past six years have been about. The comment about my clothes being uncool was a bit harsh, though. I manage a hotel, just overseeing the staff on site. I can't work with outsiders or build bridges of trust with them. In these times, that's no easy feat. Emily, can you do that? Me? You couldn't, right? Brandon supported me as vice captain in the basketball team, always striving for a better team. You, as our team assistant, should understand. Emily nodded in acknowledgement. Now, Brandon is playing the role of vice captain for his dad. The more mundane the job, the harder it is. David, Emily seemed regretful for belittling others. David's words, referencing our basketball team days, were convincing for Emily, who had witnessed it all. Brandon, I'm sorry, I didn't know anything, Emily said for of tears. It's okay if you've realized that now. How could I say such harsh things about being plain and poor? Let's leave it at that. I need to go thank the teachers who helped us. David quickly left the scene. It's tough being an organizer, keeping an eye on everything and maintaining the atmosphere. That's something I couldn't do. Emily and I stepped outside the venue to talk. There was an open, airy terrace outside quiet and just right for our conversation. We sat down at the terrace. You broke up with me in our junior year of college because you hated me, right? I was preoccupied with helping out with the family business then. 
I became a nuisance when I started voicing my opinions on that. You should have just told me. I didn't want to seem pathetic. Really, you are so modest. After our breakup, I focused solely on my work as a construction worker, eventually expanding into various infrastructure projects and consultancy. Ending our relationship during college might have been the right timing, in a way. I was pretending, just to you. Pretending, to me. I was thinking about the future after graduation, whether we'd have a stable life, whether the job had prospects. I was judging people solely by their status. In the end, I hurt you. It's in the past. If you've realized something, even a little, that's good enough. I'm sorry for being pretentious back then and just now. We're both clumsy, I guess. Emily broke down in tears again. I'd never seen her cry like this before. Remember when I asked you out, Emily? Huh? I mustered the courage because you were kind and thoughtful. I still believe you are at heart. There's no need to pretend or be haughty. Just be yourself. Okay, thank you. My plainness is just me being true to myself, I guess. Emily, with reddened eyes, smiled and we returned to the venue together. The reunion was lively with performances by alumni. Thanks to David's thoughtful organization, it ended on an emotional high, the three hours flying by. I managed to catch up with old classmates and basketball team friends, sharing stories from our past. It was a fulfilling day. I'm truly grateful to David for all his efforts in making this day, this moment, possible. As I was leaving, Emily asked me, Brandon, are you still the same height as in high school? I've shrunk a bit, down to about 5'11". I've gained some weight too. I need to go on diet. I see. Got it. Take care. See you around. Thank you for today. I couldn't come up with anything clever to say, but I did my best to express my feelings to Emily. As a CEO's daughter, she'll surely find a good husband and live happily. Our time together in high school and college is now a pleasant memory. Reunions are strange. Meeting alumni provides a lot of inspiration. Observing others helps me understand what I lack, filtering these insights from my own perspective. It makes me realize there are new worlds to discover, fueling my ambition to strive harder. Now, I must continue to work hard in my job. As a construction worker, there's much to do. I need to keep building various kinds of bridges that connect people. Three weeks after the reunion, on a rare day off at home, my mother told me a package had arrived. A package. I wonder who it's from. The sinner is. Emily. The package was a gift from Emily. It was wrapped in a large box. Ah, Emily. How nostalgic. My mother commented. I had introduced her to my parents a few times, but now she was just someone from my past. Even though we had broken up, my mother seemed oddly happy. I took the package to my room and carefully opened it. Inside was a full suit set with a dress shirt. A three-button, single-breasted suit in gray it looked sharp. So, Emily was asking about my height for this. There was a handwritten letter inside. To Brandon, thank you for kindly scolding me the other day. This suit is tailor-made by our company's designer, perfect for business, parties, weddings. Wear it and look sharp whenever you need to. Ha, huh, she's still looking after me. I had said I'd be more conscious about my attire, but I never actually went out to buy a suit. I could almost see Emily shaking her head at my lack of fashion sense. The letter continued. P.S. Is it possible to repair a broken bridge? A broken bridge? Was she referring to my role in connecting people? Repairing broken bridges is my specialty. I immediately called Emily's number. Two years later, with David's help as the hotel manager, we found ourselves back at the same venue. We're turning 30. I need to find someone special too, said David. You've always been popular, David. You'll be fine. Never thought I'd be outdone by the plain Brandon. 
Sorry for being plain. The venue that hosted our reunion now became the setting for our wedding reception. It was a new beginning for Emily and me. The Emily I knew now was the same pure and kind-hearted girl I fell in love with back in high school when I first asked her out. As I took over as the new CEO of Thompson Construction from my father, assuming the role of captain, Emily became my vice captain and assistant, supporting me in every way.